Good morning, folks. That more fun before the end of the year I talked about starts today. We've got cunning linguistics upon quite the science lineup as well, and we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. The last day on the sun was relatively quiet. Small B-class X-ray events, far side filaments ejecting, and the southern coronal hole hits central heliographic longitude. Its seismic watch begins now. Its solar wind will arrive in about two or three days, and compared to the calm plasma stream right now, it will be moderately strong. Minor geomagnetic storms are possible from the event. And folks, here's why they play the game. You can find hundreds of studies on light bridges and sunspot decay, and that's almost always what we see. But the underdog here tried to summon some minions around him as he bifurcates. Nice try, but still not going to pull off a big flare before it fully turns away from the Earth. First news up today is a link to a video on the China Observer Channel. Major snow event, people struggling to stay warm. It's hard to get great news out of China sometimes, but they do a great job. Quick skip over to electroquakes next. Pre-seismic ionospheric disturbances are one of the best ways we know that large earthquakes give themselves away beforehand, up to 10 days before. Hopefully we all recall the story about the extra dust in the solar system and how our best guess was the arrival of the higher dust population with the galactic current sheet. Well folks, you might have seen the Weather Channel story here on dust taking its toll on the Parker probe. They expected and planned for some of this, as they do with all satellites, and they did gear that up for the satellite meant to touch the sun. It's more dust than they planned for, and its navigational equipment is now in serious jeopardy. Speaking of galactic magnetism, that preprint we shared on October 28th did just get published in a major journal. Remember the same line you've heard before and probably will hear again. Some call them feathers or spurs or spiral shocks or density pressure waves. We saw that one in the last few days. It's the wavy galactic current sheet. The sine wave pattern holds here for what they are calling the Gangotri wave. I love papers like this, not only for their recognition that we need much better understanding of the planetary interior, but where the mantle conductivity is concerned. This is a huge aspect of catastrophism, given that it means that there are direct conductive pathways for space weather to reach our core. Modern space weather events induce detectable currents in the mantle already. What about the great solar flash working all the water, crystal, and metal below? Speaking of a great stellar flash, Turns out the amazing magnetars can pull out any card from the deck they want. Super luminous supernova, the brightest of the bright. No problem. The magnetic field bursts on magnetars are so spectacular, they have their own namesake, a magnetar burst. And of course, they are a form of pulsars, which can also produce the smallest of the small nova ejections, sparse fading, and unable to even get to Mercury if it were to happen on the sun. From the tiniest to the super luminous, Magnetars are utterly epic. Two things here. First, if you're in Colorado Springs area and are checking out the huge Winterfest show today, Catherine will be there, so look out for our booth among the crowd. And while I'm watching our little ones today, I'd love it if you went and watched the first video on our new channel. It's me and my buddy making the disaster vehicle. Please go check that one out today. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.